Alrighty, welcome everybody. This is the weekend video, Ender here from bullwebs.org. Um, it's been another, as always, it's been a, an interesting week. Um, as I said earlier in the week, I think the bear has just awoken again, and um, October is proving to be, as many Octobers have before, a very a pivotal month um, in the calendar. And gosh, this time next year, we could be in a full-blown economic depression, <laughs> going by the wave count. Um, but for now, we still have to deal with the day-to-day -day action. Um, so uh, we'll wrap up the week with this video. I'll go through those the nine markets, and um, we'll kind of pull them apart and see what we can kind of divine for next week. Uh, I'm putting this video out early, as I said last night. Um, I will be away for the weekend, so I want to get the stuff. Uh, I would rather do it early on Friday rather than you know leave it till late Sunday night when I get back, because I'll probably be a no fit state to think at that stage anyway. So, <laughs> okay. Um, so let's start with the euro dollar. This is the daily uh, chart, and uh, the overall count is is looking for a five waves down to a new all time low. Well, a new a new uh, decade low anyway, um, and we should break the previous low of that 103.30 uh, level there back in 17. We should break that, um, and it should be five waves down. It's a large C wave in black, the downside. Uh, these internal weight labels here could probably move up a degree, um, which would move up the count the whole way back by one degree, and that doesn't make any difference to the actual count itself. So for now, we'll just leave it as it is. Okay. So that's the daily chart. We're charting a large degree five wave move to the downside. Um, there's wave one and wave two, I think, complete. And going on this week's action, we were expecting another down week and we got another down week. So going on this week's action, I think we can confirm that that wave two is complete. Um, we could probably... Like it, technically, it won't be confirmed until uh, wave the one wave one low is broken there at one twelve ninety six. So, but I think we've gone far enough to the downside that I think we can pretty much call that uh, a done deal. Um, so that's the four hour count, uh, possibly moving down into a third wave down. Um, you can see here's the wave two high again. So we're moving down at uh, five waves down, three waves up, wave two complete. 1 2 pattern, uh, 1 2, and possibly into wave 3 of 3 of 3 of 3 of 3. <laughs> no, sorry, 3 of 3 of 1 of 3, if you can count, if you can follow that. But there is an alternate count still hanging around that we this this is a B wave low. Um, like I said, we can't really rule that out until we get below uh, that 112, uh, what was it, 112.99, uh, so 113 level. And even at that, you know, we'd, st we'd still have to push probably into the low 112s before we could rule it out. Uh, so far, we still have three waves down, but still within this um, trend channel to the downside. I'm still, I'm leaning to the bearish side, but it's it's always good to kind of keep in mind that this three waves down could be a B wave of a larger uh, wave two, which would you would still get a, a C waves up. So. We're seen as next week we will be will most likely draw close to the um, lower trend line there. It will be worthwhile keeping that in um, keeping that alternate count in mind. Um, so for next week in euro dollar for the moment, I'm still expecting more downside with a minimum uh, break of 112.40, and we'll kind of call it at that stage to see whether we can um, to see if we can uh, confirm. Um, the larger wave three down. And again, I may move this wave count up by one degree and we'll kind of take that as it comes. <clears throat> okay, so that's um, euro dollar. Here's pound dollar. Again, we're moving down into a, a large fifth wave. And at a minimum, it should break the previous wave three low. That was the wave 2016 low, 118. So we should at a minimum break 118. Um, so that's the daily count. Uh, the hourly count, our four hour count is here. You can see again that we have this alternate view of a larger second wave. Uh, let's move some of this stuff out of the way. Doo -doo -doo. You'd think that I would do this before I started recording the video. 
Okay. Yeah, the, the idea that there's a, a larger second wave in play with a three waves down B wave, so you could get three up, three down in B, and then five up in C. Still a very, it's still a distinct possibility, but um, we have to deal with the fact that it's, um, the, the market is accelerating lower, and I think if we get a break of 112, or sorry, 126.60, it would uh, it would definitely favor the um, the current wave count. Um, so for now, let's get into the hourly chart. What we're count, yeah, that's that three waves down off the uh, previous high there. Uh, we've broken through the uh, lower trend channel this morning, so that was good in terms of uh, kind of invalidating that that wave B there. Uh, that alternate count might be, and um, we seem to ex be extending lower uh, in a probably in a possible third of a third of a third wave. So uh, the 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 base case scenario for next week is uh, early next week, maybe a, a short term correction into that kind of resistance support level there, uh, the previous wave one low in uh, wave four and then a continuation lower in wave five of three so by kind of wednesday next week we should be complete um we should have completed wave three there in pink and we should be moving into a kind of a series of fourth or fifth waves down um so that's the idea for next week and like that as i said we'll we'll, we'll kind of keep uh keep a check on that in the nightly analysis and we'll see how how that plays out okay so dollar yen is so far moving um, down in that uh, second wave. I think this week we've got a kind of a an indication that it's it's now a double combination uh, wave uh, two, so a, a complex wave two, um, and more likely uh, a complex wave two, and more likely uh, to end at the previous low here, which was uh, well. We'll get into that in the four hour chart. Uh, the alternate count is still very possible. We still have a, a possibility of a triangle ongoing here. And in either scenario, we still expect a three waves uh, drop into about the 110, 109 maybe level to complete. So that's the daily chart. This is the four hour chart here. You can see that the reason I switched to the alternate count this week was uh, the outsized, uh, the oversized nature of this uh, sideways move here and um, given that it was in comparison to a very small correction in a second wave there that was previously viewed as a wave four but now it's been viewed as wave b and um, then we should move down into wave uh, c or wave c of c uh, most people would call that a kind of a wxy but i don't like <laughs> i just can't stand using wxy's just kind of confu confuses my simple mind. Okay, uh, so for let's get down to the hourly chart for next week. Yeah, you see that uh, trend channel there denotes the kind of uh, possibility for uh, three waves down. And uh, we kind of seem to have finished at a lower high there, so it could even be a, a running flat wave B there. And, and we could be moving down into a uh, wave C today. That seems to be a nice impulsive move on the short term chart there. So if we were to get a very slight correction later on today into the 11220 area, um, then we would expect a further decline to break support and to push towards that target there at 109, the upper 109s. Uh, and the reason that's the target is because uh, that's where the previous a wave A lies. So for next week, I want to see this uh, three wave correction uh, complete. And uh, then we look for a signal to the upside again. All right, so here is uh, the Dow. And as you can see, we're off nicely. Um, you can see the um, both moving averages have nicely uh, tapered out now, have flattened out, and we, we should be heading down into a down phase. We're already in a down phase, but we should be heading down into a, a kind of an acceleration lower, if you can even imagine that. Um, within the next uh, before the end of the month i reckon well we're almost at the end of the month so by the end of next week we should be completed any corrections that we're that we would expect and we should be moving down into a possible third wave down and we could even take out those previous uh, wave four lows there 
Um, he, the daily chart obviously views the, the whole uh, rally uh, of the uh, 2009 low as complete right now. And now we're moving into a, a very large, it should be a very large three-wave move down uh, over the next, wow, when would you call it? Over the next possible two or three years. Um, and we have significant support, I think, on a weekly basis, I think we have that significant support right down at the uh, 2009 low. So we could be talking about taking out 20,000 points over the uh, kind of period of this next um, half cycle, let's call it, where this would be the cycle high and, and you're you're looking at kind of coming down into the, uh, the previous significant support level. So we have previous fourth wave there at 15,500 and we have a previous second wave there at 10,000. So uh, somewhere along that line, we will uh, probably hit a B wave rally. Uh, it'll probably be a pretty intense rally, and then we'll dump again into a C wave. Anyway, that's way out into the future. So this is the daily chart. Uh, there's no point in talking about the daily chart. Let's go to the four hour chart. I think we've got five waves down complete, and today the market is lower in the futures again. So um, we'll see how that plays out. It's a possibility that we have a running flat completed here. This is the hourly chart. So you can see five waves down, and then we're looking for a second wave correction. So uh, the hourly chart again, we've got, um, uh, I've gotten rid of my wave one there. Wave one, two, three, triangle wave four, five into that uh, previous low there at uh, 24,750. Um, possible three waves up in wave two complete. Uh, a nice dump over the last couple of days. So we've had a lower high again. We might even see a lower high again today. Uh, futures have brought the market down. So this uh, trend channel here, or sorry, this trend line to the downside uh, should should keep uh, the price, should hold the price uh, in a possible second wave today. Um, I'll review this later, uh, but I won't get back to it tonight. But um, you still have the possibility uh, although it's a declining possibility at the moment, you still have that possibility of a, a larger C wave to complete to complete a larger wave uh, too. So that would be um, in the guise of a, a probably an expanded flat, uh, three waves up, maybe a three waves down, and then a five wave rally in wave C. So we should be able to, I'd say by the end of this evening, we should be able to... Um, discern which of those is is more likely do we have wave two complete right now and are we working on a series of impulse waves to the downside again um that's a very real possibility right now uh, i'm sticking with the bearish outlook uh for the immediate future so for next week it's it's looking like it's going to be another down week and it's looking like it could actually even be a very big down week <laughs> Uh, given the fact uh, that we could be moving into a third of a third of a third wave. Um, if that's the case, well, then the next significant support is at the previous fourth wave, so you're 20, the upper 23,000, so 23,970 there. Um, and probably even below that again, uh, we got 23,300, and that's at the previous higher degree fourth wave, so we've got two degree degrees of fourth waves there, which um, will operate as kind of, let's say, targets and supports over the next uh, week or so in a possible third wave down. So um, early next week, uh, let's watch for uh, this downside trend line to kind of hold uh, maybe a three-wave recovery in a second wave and then a dump into a third wave. So uh, watch out if um, if you're trading this. Then again, the, the counter-trend rallies could be quite severe. So... Uh, and they have tended to be over the last few days. It's really, <laughs> you could make a whole lot of money, but you could lose a whole lot as well, you know, uh, very quickly. And just as it comes to my mind, we could have a, uh, a larger three wave in wave two on, unfolding as well. So you can see that ABC type of uh, pattern. I reckon if we get a, if we get a rally today, um, into the close and it takes out that previous high there 
at um, let's say 25 if we push back up to about 25 200 uh, today so that'd be a that'd be about a 500 point rally then you could call that a three wave correction in wave two and then next week we'd still look for the same uh, we'd still have the same outlook to the downside okay so that's uh the dow complete let's move on to gold gold in general i'm looking for um, an acceleration higher in a third wave uh, we've got this kind of wave one and uh, wave one two one two pattern in so far uh, in uh, in play and i think the fact that we've pushed up to these the current levels up into the mid 30s has probably ruled out that uh, alternate count there for a larger wave two because we're, we're pushing up back into this previous uh, low there and if we take out that in a nice impulsive fashion that 2330 level if we push up into 2340 in a kind of an acceleration phase well then we would pretty much confirm the fact that we're moving into a third wave higher okay so that's the daily chart this is the four hour chart here we're looking at a one two pattern and then um the rally over the last couple of weeks uh, has is viewed as um a third wave up so um, for next week, we should see this continuation higher in a third wave. Uh, you can see that the price is now holding nicely above this uh, the short-term moving average there, the 50-period moving average on the four-hour chart. Let's get down to the hourly chart there. So we've got that uh, wave one, two pattern. You can see there, one, two off the low, and then we're moving higher in a one, two, three, four, and quite likely a fifth wave right now. Uh, and an extension higher in a fifth wave. Um, a, th there is a possibility that this uh, this pattern here is a triangle in a in a larger fourth wave. That again, it kind of remains to be seen. You could have three waves down in A, three up in B, three down in C, D, and E, and that could even be complete at yesterday's low. So we could be moving into wave one of five now, rather than wave three of five. But uh, kind of a distinction without a difference really uh, the target for wave three in blue here is up at the 1270s uh, so yeah, the higher 1260s and that's where um, wave three reaches uh, the Fibonacci 161.8 percent extension so for next week we want to see that 1220 level hold no matter which way this uh, fourth wave actually plays out even if it's a larger fourth wave, we want to see that 1220 hold and we want to see a uh, push up into that uh, 1260 level. That's, that is uh, gold. So let's move on to crude. And we have come down nicely off that uh, fourth wave high as we were looking for. Um, and it's quite likely now that we have a fifth wave down in, in play in crude oil. And I like the fact that it's falling with the market as well, with the stock market. So, um, yeah, it kind of adds uh, fuel to the fire, in fact, uh, to the fact that we have uh, a, let's say, a kind of com uh, a confluence of events across markets. Um, with three waves up, completing a fourth wave, and we're looking for a fifth wave down, and uh, we're moving down into that right now. So let's get the four hour chart out. And um, I'm kind of viewing uh, the recent extreme low as a possible wave one down. And we would probably next week look for a second wave correction. Uh, and that's the, so you'd have a, a large degree impulse wave complete off the um, most recent high. So you'd have one, two down. So let's get down into the hourly chart and kind of pull this apart and see how that, that's working. So possibility that wave one is complete uh, but the fact that we were looking for a, a further drop today, uh, the market has dropped so far. So it is possible that wave four is complete in a possible run, in a running flat. I've said possible six thousand times today to pull that out of my head for a while. So we could have wave one, two, three, triangle wave four, an extension in wave five, or we could have wave one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, wave three, uh, some sort of fourth wave completing now and then a move down into a fifth wave it would be nice to see key support break at uh, 63.94 there and the reason that's key support is 
is the previous low and is the previous fourth wave at the higher degree. And a break at that level would rule out an extension higher in a fifth wave. So um, right now uh, we're looking at this wave one completing, if not already complete. And um, we should be moved next week, which we'll probably actually find quite a choppy week next week. And it'll hang around that, oscillate around that 66 level, if I'm correct. Um, and we'll see a wave A and B, maybe even a C wave. Um, maybe even a C wave complete um, next week. Sorry, I had to get up there. My dog's barking. So, yeah, so we're looking for a three wave recovery next week to kind of call a very large impulse wave complete off the high. And that's uh, crude oil. Okay, it's the SP. And again, the SP is. Is, um, is looking horrendously bearish at the moment. We have uh, a break of the previous fourth wave in, in the S&P, so that's uh, 2690 level broke uh, yesterday. Or was it yesterday? Yeah, uh, sorry, Wednesday, uh, with a big dive uh, on Wednesday. Um, so that kind of confirms that the bear market is in, pretty much. Um, the uh, five waves down looks pretty solid to me off the high and we would look for the completion of a second wave correction either later today or early next week so let's get down to the hourly chart you could have well like i said uh, last night we could have had um wave two complete last night uh, in a running flat that's kind of the jury's still out on that one the idea i'm kind of proposing this morning is uh the futures are down so we could be moving down into um uh, another lower degree impulse wave off that wave too high so we could be working on either wave one pink or uh, wave one gray so at another wave one down let's call it um, so just like the, the Dow uh, the SP is looking pretty damn bearish and um, I think the outlook in the longer term is most definitely uh, we're entering a new bear market. We're already halfway there. I mean, we're down 10% off the high. So, you know, another 10% and we'll actually technically call it a bear market. So uh, I like to get in there early <laughs> on that one. Now, the idea for a second wave here is, is either that it's complete or we're seeing some sort of uh, a complex second wave develop. Um, we'll leave it another few hours. <clears throat> And we'll see if we get a bounce into uh, that de declining trend line. Um, I was kind of proposing that 20, uh, 2730 or 2740 level for uh, a completing second wave. Um, if we get a lower degree bounce, if we get a, a you know a, a short and a weak rally today, well then we could probably see that uh, we could probably call that uh, decline a, a lower degree impulse wave, and we. have We'd look for a confirmation then of the break of the previous lows early next week to uh, call wave three of three of three to the downside underway. Um, and the outlook is not good for uh, stocks. So like I've been warning for the last while, I hope we're all out of it and out of the stocks right now. <laughs> and you're just conserving your capital because the, the ride is going to get very, very bumpy uh, over the next while. Okay, so this is silver. And we're looking at a wave one and wave two completion silver. And I know it's a very hairy move off the low so far, but there is a possibility. Um, I am tentatively bullish on silver because of the fact that um, the complementary metal gold is is looking quite uh, is looking quite bullish. So um, for now, we'll kind of call the bottom in in silver and. Uh, We'll see how that plays out. Okay, so the four hour chart looks uh, like a completed wave C down and uh, wave C of C of two, and the move off the low is uh, is a possibility of. Uh, I'm going with a, an expanding wedge off the low, and I know it's a, it's kind of an out there count, but 
still very much a possibility. So wave one up and wave two or is complete, or we we're still working on wave two. It's 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 very hard to um parse that out at the moment. The market is slightly higher this morning. Um so that that does kind of push it in favor of like an, a, an immediate bullish outlook. But I can't get rid of the, the fact that we have a three wave rally into that uh, upper trend line there. Um, it's the, the, the move off that high has been pretty corrective so far. So we'll have to see if we get um, a possible C wave to complete wave two in pink or uh, a larger C wave to complete the larger wave two. So either way, we have two kind of. Um, Support levels. If we if we break fourteen fifty one, then we'd look at would, that would trigger this uh, immediate count, or that would confirm this immediate count. Let's let's say, and that would be um, for wave two, uh, pink to be complete, and then if we get um, a break of uh, support of fourteen twenty three, well then that would confirm the larger wave two idea. Uh, I'm just kind of cleaning this up as I go. Because that's just the way we roll here. Okay, so for next week, again, we want to see a correction complete and we want to see a push higher in a third wave. Uh, $15 is the kind of uh, bullish confirmation point at this moment in time. Okay, so here is uh, the 10-year treasury. We were looking last night at a possible wave four and we were looking for a push higher in wave five. Uh, the market is higher this morning. Um, and it's hit that 119.50% uh, retracement level, so that's kind of the level we've been looking at ever since that B wave low. Um, so we've got there, we've pushed up that uh, 125 basis points, um, and we seem to have a five wave rally complete. So we, I think we can pretty much call wave C of two complete right now. So that means we have a wave one down for the four hour chart, we have a wave. Uh, one down complete and a large wave two down or up complete. So we have a, a, a bearish impulse pattern complete out of a triangle. So uh, the likelihood is now that we will next week we should uh, see a reversal lower again and we'll complete a, a lower degree impulse wave off that um, wave two high, which would give us an indication that we're moving down into wave three. So the outlook for uh, treasuries is not good, uh, given the fact that uh, the U.S. Treasury has to roll over so much debt later or early next year. I think around uh, February or March. The idea that um, rates are going to be much higher, pushing up towards the four and a half or five percent <clears throat> on the ten-year. <coughs> Excuse me. That's um, that's going to be daunting for the U.S. Treasury, seeing as they have so much short-term debt at the moment. Okay, so for now, uh, next week, we want to see uh, this wave two complete, and we want to see an impulse wave, uh, a small, a lower degree impulse wave off that wave two high. Um, so we'd look for a kind of a short term head and shoulders around that uh, wave C there to give us an indication that we're moving down into wave three. Uh, so that's it, uh, we're done. It was a kind of a long winded one today. Um, but we've got through it quite well. Um, the outlook for next week is looking, I said this week was going to be a pivotal week and it, it has turned out to be, I think we've broken some pretty key, key levels in the stock market and, um, yeah, hang on to your hats, everyone. Um, wish you a good weekend and we'll see you back here for you guys on Monday evening and, uh, have a good one. God bless. Godspeed. Bye-bye.